Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today we have a bit of a different review for the channel. The iRobot Scuba 450 Mopping Robot, the cousin to the incredibly epic Roomba 980, which I had a chance to review recently as well. I'll link to it on your screens now. Starting off with my final thoughts first, the Scuba 450 is a fantastic robot and an even better mop. Really, the only drawback is that you'll end up wanting to use it more times than the battery can provide on a single charge. In short, it's amazing, and if you hate the tedious task of mopping as much as most, I'd recommend pulling the trigger and getting one. You'll thank yourself in the long term. While the Brava 300 series is technically the floor mopping lineup offered by iRobot and the Scuba 400 series is listed as floor scrubbing, the Scuba 450 is the true champion when it comes to mopping any type of hard surface, including hardwood, tile, linoleum, and so on. Alright, so starting off with the box, it's very nicely designed and what you'd expect for a premium floor mopping robot that costs roughly $500. The front simply has a picture of the robot and confirms that it is indeed the Scuba 450 floor scrubbing model. Besides detail what's included and some other features we'll get into shortly, whereas the back elaborates on the awesome three cycle cleaning process of the Scuba 450 that I'll highlight during this review. Now in the box, which I've already opened previously because I have been testing it for a while now, we have the robot itself, the tank, which features an easy connect design, basic literature on the robot robot to get you started, the charger, and a virtual wall. It also comes with the battery uninstalled though getting it inserted into the battery compartment of the robot is a very simple task. Just twist the two locks to take the cover off, put the battery in with the notch facing up, and lock the cover behind it. For a quick overview of the unit, it has three buttons. From left to right, the information button, which will communicate the status of the robot and which job you've selected in an audible form. Here's a quick example of that. The multi-purpose clean and power button, which also has a ring around it to indicate the progress of a job, and the room selection button, either 150 square feet or 300 square feet. The bottom is where things get really interesting. We have one wheel at the top that pivots in all directions, allowing the robot to make turns, as well as two additional wheels behind it that adjust based on floor level and a simple to remove brush, followed by several squeegee and bristle sections. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is to charge it, which is a breeze. All you have to do is just plug the outlet cable into the corresponding end of the power brick. Then open up the plastic tab that's covering the charging port on the side of the robot, connect the cable to it, and then the other end into the wall. Now an LED indicator on the top of the robot will illuminate and the color corresponds to the charge level, orange for charging and green for fully charged. For those of you looking for a better method of wireless charging, the dry dock charging and drying stand iRobot makes for the Scuba 450 is really great. It not only charges the robot by placing it on the dock, but it will also activate a special fan inside of the robot itself that will actually dry the Scuba 450 from the inside out, ensuring that no mold or mildew will grow and reducing maintenance. As you can see, assembly is very easy and it makes use of the aforementioned charging brick that comes with it. A basic infographic and a diagram inside the dock will aid you in the very simple installation process. After that, connect the cable to the wall and simply place the robot on to the dock. The contacts should align perfectly thanks to the dock's first party nature. The same LED charging indicator will illuminate on the robot and a fan has now been activated inside of Scuba to dry it. Note that the fan makes minimal noise. Getting started with a cleaning job is also easy. Just take the tank, which is separated into several sections. The blue side is where clean water and the solution go, and the gray one is where dirty water is stored, which should be emptied after every job, and it's kept completely separate from the clean water thanks to the tank's internal separator. We also have a tab that we can twist and pull out to reveal a screen that acts as a barrier preventing larger dirt particles and debris from entering the inner workings of the tank. It's also incredibly convenient that the tank has a flattened base which allows for placing it on a flat surface when filling it and when measuring out the solution. So all we have to do to prepare the tank is to just take the blue cap out, fill it with room temperature tap water, add solution to the line marked inside of the cap. It's very easy to see and you just use iRobot's provided solution and then pour it into the tank along with the water and twist it to close. From there simply connect the tank to the robot. Don't worry if there's any residual water clinging to the tank or the metal connectors on the tank, it will of course still function properly. Now before proceeding, I'm going to add some muddy footprints to our test floor. Also take into consideration that the 
blinds were left open to add varying levels of contrast in the shot to capture as much of the action as possible. Next, after pressing that power clean button once, select your room size by using the third button and press the clean power button again to start. You can also press the I and the robot will talk to you confirming which room setting it's on. Finally, sit back and let Scuba do all of the work while you take the credit once the job's complete. You'll notice at first that the patterns seem rather sporadic, but it's actually employing the built-in iAdapt technology, which is defined as a quote, advanced system of software and sensors used in world-renowned Roomba. Scuba 450 offers complete cleaning coverage of every section of your floor, end quote. Basically, it needs to get a sense for the room it's cleaning by using various travel patterns and bumping into objects. Now, you'll also notice it's three-stage cleaning technique that I mentioned previously, which is very unique in that it sweeps and pre-soaks the floor first. Then it proceeds to scrub and squeegee vacuum, spinning the brushes to remove dirt while a squeegee vacuum lifts the dirty water off the floor. This is the longest step. It will then finish off with a final squeegee round that provides extra cleaning and ensures that the floor dries as best as possible. I've also set up a couple of virtual walls, one of which was included, to keep it confined into the recording area you see now. It basically treats the IR or infrared light emitted by the virtual walls as physical ones and doesn't pass the invisible barriers. It will also even avoid carpet thanks to its carpet detector, so that way it stays scrubbing what's actually meant to be scrubbed. Ledges are also a breeze, switching to this shot momentarily thanks to the built-in cliff detectors. Scuba will purposefully avoid ledges, preventing it from falling and damaging itself. It's never fallen once in my rigorous testing of it. Now the noise levels aren't too bad at all, just slightly louder than the Roomba, though you probably wouldn't want to be in the same room with one, especially if you're talking on the phone while it's in the middle of a job. Here, take a listen. Also, keep in mind that the battery is only adequate for one 300 square foot job at a time, which is the size of the large room job, or two 150 square foot small room jobs before it needs to be recharged. For cleaning larger rooms, simply section off the room with the included virtual wall, empty the tank, charge it, refill, and finish up with another job. I've found personally that most rooms, unless you live in an enormous house, are perfectly fine to clean with one or two jobs max. This entire area that it was cleaning only took 23 minutes to complete and it's just slightly longer if you're going with the larger 300 square foot job. As you can see, the floor has been cleaned to perfection after seriously putting the Scuba 450 through its paces by grinding some muddy shoes into the hard wood. Aside from the scratches in one area of the floor, which obviously Scuba won't be able to do anything about, it's left the floors looking squeaky clean. All that's left now is to empty the tank, and as you can see, the proof is definitely in the tank. The separate dirty water compartment reveals where all the mud that was once on the floor has now gone. All right, now wrapping up, as stated at the beginning, the Scuba 450 is an amazing product and works even better than I expected. Be sure to rate this video up if it helped. Check out my Roomba 980 video and stay tuned for coverage on future iRobot products. Also, be sure to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter for even more updates. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.